The first and perhaps the most uh, critical is what I call context intelligence. This is what people in the military refer to as situational intelligence. You know, you drop into an unfamiliar environment and you immediately have to make sense of it and figure it out. Or it's what basketball great Bill Bradley called a sense of where you are when his uh, biographer, uh, John McPhee, wrote a great book about him by the same uh, title where Bill Bradley famously would turn away from the basket and throw the basketball and it would somehow always seem to find its way to the basket. He always knew where he was. He would pass the ball without looking at the receiver. He would do all kinds of things because he knew where he was. And the journey, if we're talking about the journey of going from today to the future that we want, we have to begin with a clear sense of where we are. What is the truth of our situation separate from all of our uh, prejudices, our biases? You know, having expertise actually is a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, the Zen Buddhists are fond of saying in the mind of the expert, there are many opinions. And in the mind of the beginner, there are very few, if any, opinions. And therefore, all new things begin with the mind of the beginner. So core competencies and expertises can become core rigidities and, and blinders. And of course, uh, we all know about confirmation bias. We all know that we tend to create our own reality. We see this very much in our polarized global society where we have hermetically sealed off information and news environments. We have the proliferation of alternative facts and things of this kind. It's increasingly easy through the power of social media to create that diversity of opinion that uh, mitigates against alignment, against being able to see things accurately as they are. So this whole notion of context intelligence as first establishing the truth of where you are, researching data, being able to read weak signals, being able to honor uh, divergent opinions, uh, being able to work with people whose point of view is different from yours, perhaps even discordant from yours, cultivating novel sources of input. You know, one of the reasons that uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was so successful as a leader is because he cultivated people who had novel points of view and he empowered them to do things that were out of the traditional chain of command. He would call someone into his office who was a junior diplomat or a junior officer, and he would say, go off and find out about this and then come back and just report to me. He had famously Harry Hopkins, his right-hand guy, living in the White House during World War II and being dispatched on missions of great consequence uh, where his resume would not necessarily have supported that role at all. So cultivating novel sources of information, divergent sources of information, casting a wide net. You know, divergent thinking leads to a quantity of ideas, which in turn can be then curated and focused to lead to the insights that you really need in order to prosecute your business.